Hi, and welcome to Origami. We will be building this prototype, and by doing so, learning the fundamentals of using Origami, as well as import from design tools such as Sketch. Follow along by downloading the lesson files that accompany this tutorial. If you haven't already, download Origami. You'll need that too. Importing from design tools such as Sketch is as simple as copying and pasting. We're coming from Sketch, but support for other design tools is also available or on the way. Make sure you have the sketch file from our lesson files open. Let's copy our photo layer, a landscape photo of the Golden Gate Bridge. Let's first select the photo in the layer panel, go to edit and then copy. In a new origami prototype, let's go to edit, paste. Our whole landscape photo has now been imported. Let's go back to sketch and do the same thing with our info folder, which is made up of a few text layers, an image layer, and a gradient. Select the info folder, go to edit, copy, go back to origami, go to edit, paste, or you can just do command B. And now we have all our layers from sketch. What we have on the left is our viewer, where we can see and interact with everything that's happening in our prototype. On the right, we have our layers, and the layer inspector. The middle area is the patch editor. More on that later. Let's choose the photo layer and change the anchor so it's anchored to the center of the screen. Let's do the same with our info folder, but this time let's make sure it's anchored to the center bottom. If you open that info group, you'll see that all our layers have been brought in where possible as native origami layers. That means, for example, we can change our text layer from what it is now, which is San Francisco, to anything else. The first thing we want to do is add interaction to our photo layer. To add interaction to a layer, hover over the layer in the layer panel, click on touch, and then click on tap. This is our first patch, an interaction patch. We'll cover patches in detail a little bit later on, but for now, let's just keep an eye on the down and tap outputs of our patch whilst tapping on the photo in the viewer. You'll see that both of these outputs will light up corresponding to when I press down and when I release, which equals a tap. We want this to transition between two values of scale, a scale of one, which is what we have now, and a scale of whatever fits into the screen, which is about 0.38. The next patch we need to add is a transition patch, since we want to eventually transition between these two values. We can add another patch by double tapping on the patch editor, typing to find transition, and then hitting return. Let's put these two values as our two inputs on the transition patch. Let's make the start input 0.38 since we know that's the scale that fits the photo in screen and the end input should be 1 which it's at by default. Next we want to connect us pressing down on the photo to transitioning between those two values. Let's connect the down output of our purple interaction patch to the progress input of the transition by clicking and dragging on the down output into the progress input of the transition patch. We want this transition to affect the photo scale. Let's connect this transition to the photo scale by clicking and dragging from the transition patch output to the scale property of the photo. All right, so you can see now that when you press down on the photo, the transition occurs instantly between 0.38 and 1. The next thing we want to do is add a little animation to this. So let's make a little room between the interaction and transition patches. Let's then double tap on the patch editor, type defined animation, and then press return when we get a pop animation. Insert this patch between the interaction and transition patches by connecting the down output of the interaction patch to the number input of the pop animation patch and then the progress output of the pop animation patch to the progress input of the transition patch. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this up now. 
You might start to see now that everything in the patch editor flows left to right. Now when I press down on the photo, this transition is eased or animated. We can change some of these animation settings in pop animation to have a completely different feel. All right, so let me just undo those changes. So this is great, but we want this transition to occur when we tap the photo, not just when we press down. Try connecting the tap output of the interaction patch to the number input of the pop animation. You'll see that it's triggering, but it's not holding that state. That's because a tap lasts for one frame when you release your finger. We need something to hold that tap until we tap again. To do that, we need to add a switch patch to our patch editor. Double tap in the patch editor, type define switch, and press return. Like we did with the pop animation, let's insert this between the other patches, immediately after the interaction patch. Let's connect the tap output of our interaction patch to the flip input of the switch, and then connect the output of our switch to the number input of our pop animation patch, which automatically removes the old connection. All right, so let's give that a go. You'll see now that whenever we tap, that triggers a flip on the switch patch, which doesn't flip back until we tap again. Our transition stays at one progress until we flip back to the other by tapping once more. You'll see now that whenever we tap, that triggers a flip on the switch patch, which doesn't flip back until we tap again. Our transition stays at one progress until we flip back to the other by tapping once more. These four patches that you see here make up the bulk of your prototyping in origami. So once you get used to using them, you'll be up and running. Before continuing, I just want to go over the patches in a little bit more detail so you know how they work. Let's add an addition patch. Double tap in the patch editor and press return since it's the first one that comes up. Let's add two random numbers to the inputs of the addition patch, say two and three. These numbers on the left are our inputs and the number on the right is our output. Notice how I can't manually change that. The two inputs can be anything and connected from anywhere. For example, I could change them to 6 and 3. Now you'll see that the output number changes to 9. A patch is basically a module that takes inputs, does something inside, and then gives you an output, which you can use somewhere else too. Hence why that output just changed to 9, and why things flow from left to right in origami. Let's add another patch to show that in a bit more detail. Double tap in the patch editor, type a dash to find subtraction, and then press return. Take the output from the addition patch and connect it to the first input of the subtraction patch. Because the first input is nine and the second input is zero, and because this particular patch subtracts numbers as its job, the output is nine. But we can change that second input to anything we like. See how our output of the subtraction patch is affected by what's happening here? Hopefully you see how our, our output of the subtraction patch is affected by what's happening here. Let's change the inputs on our addition patch again. You'll see that the output of our addition patch is changing and passing that through to our subtraction patch and to that output too. Okay, so back to our prototype. As we mentioned earlier, these four patches make up the bulk of what you use in day-to-day -day prototyping in origami. However, this chain of patches can be reused for other interactions right here too. We know that we want our text layers in the prototype to hide and show, as well as the background color to change as well. We can make this happen by using the current set of patches on the editor to create this interaction. So let's double tap on the patch editor to bring up the patch library and start typing transition and then press return. We can connect the existing output of our pop animation patch to the progress input of our transition patch. We want the info to start at an opacity of zero and end at one. So the defaults here are actually perfect. Let's connect the output of this to the opacity property of our info group. Lastly, let's add one more transition patch to the patch editor. 
Let's double tap on the patch editor, type in transition and then press return. We're going to use this one to change the color of our background color fill. So we need to change the type of this transition. Let's right click on the transition patch and change the type to color. We know that we want the start to be white and the end to be black. Like before, let's connect the output of the pop animation patch to the progress input of the transition patch. Now let's connect the output of our new transition patch to the color property of the color fill layer. You can see now that when you interact with the prototype, it transitions the color fill from white when the image is scaled down to black when the image is zoomed in. Like I was saying earlier, these four patches make up the bulk of your prototyping in origami. Have a look at the examples from this tutorial and related tutorials and these will soon become second nature.